SpaceX just dropped a bombshell. Starship 36 has rolled out with heat shield upgrades so smart, so clean, and so next level. They make Sierra Space Dream Chaser's latest thermal tech look like yesterday's news. We're talking new tile designs, innovative gap fillers, and a thermal protection system that's designed for Mars, not just low Earth orbit. And the best part? It's cheaper, faster to maintain, and built for rapid reusability. The old school RTV doesn't even come close. In today's Tech Map episode, we're diving into how SpaceX's genius upgrades are humiliating traditional TPS systems, and why Starship might just be the most advanced spacecraft ever built. On June 15th, media outlets captured images of Starship 36, rolling out for static fire testing at SpaceX's Massey test site. Unlike its predecessors, like S-33 and S-34, which had missing heat shield tiles either at the top or bottom, S-36 appears to sport a full complement of these critical thermal protection components. This points to a shift in SpaceX's approach, potentially emphasizing greater durability and a safer re-entry profile over pushing performance limits, as seen with earlier models. Another notable change is the increased use of gap fillers between the heat shield's hexagonal tiles. These fillers are crucial during re-entry, where temperatures can soar above 1,650 Kelvin, 2,510 degrees Fahrenheit, or 1,377 degrees Celsius. In such extreme conditions, hot gases can seep through the narrow spaces between tiles. Gap fillers act as a second line of defense, insulating the vehicle's structure from intense heat and minimizing the risk of damage. However, we still don't know the exact type of gap filler being used. What we do know, thanks to Elon Musk's comments to Ars Technica ahead of Flight 9, is that SpaceX has varied the gap filler. This change was tested alongside other updates to the heat shield, including new coatings, fabrication methods, and attachment techniques. The early results are promising. Elon mentioned there was no significant loss of heat shield tiles during ascent and noted they've gathered a lot of good data to review. That data is absolutely essential. The critical phase, high-speed atmospheric re-entry, generates heat and stress levels that simply can't be simulated on the ground. Real flight data gives engineers the insights they need to improve tile performance and overall vehicle safety. Interestingly, there's also a central horizontal section on S36 where tiles are missing, revealing the structural underpinnings. You can see metal brackets or supports in that exposed section with clips or protrusions that might be used to anchor tiles or gap fillers. Some tiles on the edges seem to be loose or misaligned, suggesting assembly or repair work is still underway. Additionally, white thermal felts are visible in multiple areas. These materials cut into hexagonal shapes and tucked between tiles. They serve as a secondary insulation layer, enhancing the spacecraft's heat resistance during re-entry. This process is significantly simpler and cleaner compared to using room temperature vulcanizing, RTV, silicone, which was utilized on NASA's Space Shuttle and Sierra Space's Dream Chaser. Both methods serve a similar purpose, sealing gaps and providing insulation. RTV functions as a secondary sealant between tiles, filling small spaces to block hot gas from penetrating during re-entry. Although it's not the main thermal barrier, it plays a role in maintaining structural integrity. In contrast, the white felt observed on S36 likely serves the same function, sealing gaps and offering added thermal protection, but it's applied through a much more straightforward, hands-on method that requires little more than precision tools. RTV silicone, on the other hand, requires mixing a base compound with a curing agent, typically in a 1 to 5 percent ratio, and cures at room temperature with moisture. It's applied as a paste or liquid, which then hardens under controlled environmental conditions such as humidity and temperature. This makes the process more complex with careful attention needed to prevent uneven distribution or excess material, issues that can arise even in industries like automotive gasket manufacturing. 
From a cleanliness standpoint, the white felt seen on S36 looks exceptionally tidy. Its pre-cut hexagonal shape and careful folding result in clean edges with no visible residue or overflow. Being a dry material, it doesn't drip or smear, eliminating the need for cleanup after installation. This makes it a much cleaner alternative to RTV. RTV, being liquid during application, is inherently messier. Excess material often squeezes out, requiring trimming or wiping once cured. Moreover, its chemical nature introduces risks like outgassing or poor adhesion, if not applied perfectly, challenges that are less than ideal for high-stakes aerospace environments like Starship. In terms of thermal and mechanical performance, if the white felt is made from ceramic or carbon-based fibers, common in aerospace, it likely withstands temperatures between 1,200 degrees Celsius and 1,400 degrees Celsius. While this is slightly below the 1,650 Kelvin, 1,377 degrees Celsius, temperatures the tiles endure. Their flexibility and ability to conform to gaps help reduce stress points, those spots where the spaceship might crack or break under pressure. Imagine squeezing a soft cushion into the cracks of a Lego structure to keep it steady. That's kind of what the felt does. RTV silicone, while flexible and adhesive, offers heat resistance typically up to 205 degrees Celsius, 400 degrees Fahrenheit, with some specialized formulations going higher. However, that's still far below the heat levels of atmospheric re-entry. As a result, RTV likely sees limited use in Starship's heat protection system, restricted to less demanding secondary areas. It also degrades more easily when exposed to plasma, making it less viable as a primary gap filler. Considering Starship's core mission, rapid reusability and streamlined maintenance, the advantages of white felt become clear. If the material is replaceable, it could speed up post-flight repairs. RTV, by contrast, must be reapplied after damage, involving a curing process that takes hours to days, depending on conditions. Elon Musk has pointed out how time-consuming tile maintenance was on the space shuttle, a problem SpaceX clearly wants to avoid. Finally, ceramic felt could be cheaper and easier to mass-produce than custom RTV compounds, especially if SpaceX standardizes an in-house production method. The manual placement, seen on S36, suggests a low-tech but scalable strategy that fits well with initial testing phases. While RTV is commercially available, its use in aerospace requires strict quality control, increasing costs. It also needs skilled technicians and specialized tools, factors that make it harder to scale for large surfaces like Starship's belly. In summary, the felt's foldable, pre-cut design sidesteps RTV's mess and curing time, offering a pragmatic solution to the reusability challenge. This low-complexity approach might be a deliberate choice for S36's static fire test, allowing SpaceX to quickly validate its effectiveness without the additional complexity of RTV application. Anyway, if you loved this deep dive, smash that like button, hit subscribe, and ring the bell. We're aiming for 150,000 subscribers, and we need you to get there. Check out our other videos on Starship, Artemis, and more, and let's keep exploring the cosmos together. It's fair to say that in pursuit of full and rapid reusability, SpaceX has implemented some of the most advanced thermal protection system technologies ever developed for Starship. This system is more intricate than those found on other spacecraft, like Sierra Space's Dream Chaser which makes sense given Starship's larger size and far more ambitious goals. Dream Chaser, a reusable winged space plane about 30 feet long, is built for low-Earth orbit missions. Its primary role is to deliver cargo to the International Space Station under NASA's Commercial Resupply Services contract with future potential for carrying crew. Starship, by contrast, is a fully reusable spacecraft standing roughly 403 feet tall. It's designed not just for LEO missions, but for interplanetary journeys, like to Mars, lunar landings, and heavy lift orbital transport. Dream Chaser's thermal protection relies on upgraded tiles 
made from a silicon carbide and carbon fiber composite. This silicon carbide-based TPS combines the high heat resistance and corrosion durability of silicon carbide with the strength and thermal consistency of carbon fiber. The result is a lightweight, low-profile barrier that maintains insulation and aerodynamic stability during multiple re-entries. Covering most of the vehicle's exterior, these advanced tiles are similar to the Space Shuttle's TPS, but with updated coatings. Notably, Dream Chaser uses larger 10 by 10 inch tiles compared to the shuttle's 6 by 6 inch versions, meaning only about 2,000 tiles are needed instead of the shuttle's 24,000. Another material, toughened uni piece. Fibrous reinforced oxidation resistant composite is used on Dream Chaser's most heat exposed areas, such as the nose and wing edges. This material, which has also flown on the X37B, replaces the shuttle's reinforced carbon-carbon and offers improved toughness and affordability. Starship, on the other hand, features around 18,000 ceramic hexagonal tiles across its windward side. These are produced in-house by SpaceX and are likely made from silica or alumina-based materials designed to withstand high heat flux. Underneath the tiles lies the 304L stainless steel airframe, which acts as a heatsink. With a melting point around 1,400 degrees Celsius, this stainless steel allows for thinner tiles and provides resilience to minor damage. Unlike the shuttle's aluminum frame, which was more vulnerable to heat to survive superorbital re-entries, like those from Mars, Starship might employ active cooling systems using liquid methane. These could include heat pipes or film cooling where methane is expelled across the surface to create a protective barrier layer. These upgrades have been incorporated into recent tests as SpaceX sharpens its focus on rapid reusability. In parallel, early Mars missions might still rely on ablative materials for the vehicle's leading edges or high heat zones, trading reusability for increased payload capacity. As said, Starship's tiles are mechanically fastened not bonded like those on the shuttle or Dream Chaser. This enables easier replacement and speeds up maintenance, critical for fast turnaround between flights. The vehicle's reflective stainless steel skin has low emissivity, reducing how much heat it absorbs, but does require active cooling during re-entry. Starship's TPS is engineered for extreme dynamic pressure and heat during belly-first re-entry, ideal for interplanetary travel. The steel's heat sinking properties reduce the dependency on perfect tile coverage, which was a necessity on the shuttle's less heat tolerant aluminum structure. Compared to NASA's Space Shuttle, Dream Chaser also uses room temperature vulcanizing silicone to help secure its tiles and prevent them from coming loose. However, it skips thermal blankets, unlike the shuttle, making the system simpler and more tile focused. Its TPS is capable of withstanding temperatures up to 1,650 degrees Celsius, 3,000 degrees Fahrenheit, and helps regulate internal temperatures during orbital sunlight exposure, around 250 degrees Fahrenheit. All these improvements make Dream Chaser's tiles stronger, lighter, and more cost-effective than those used on the shuttle. Modern coatings lower costs without compromising thermal performance. Larger tile sizes reduce maintenance demands and meet micrometeoroid and orbital debris protection standards. Materials like TUFROC and silicon carbide composites offer added resilience in critical heat zones. That said, tile-based TPS systems still require regular inspection and potential tile replacement. But thanks to the stronger, larger tiles and shielding provided by fairings, Dream Chaser's maintenance burden is far lighter than what the shuttle faced and is sufficient for the less extreme conditions of LEO re-entry. More advanced than Sierra Space's approach, SpaceX uses mechanically attached tiles to simplify maintenance and replacement, directly tackling the labor-intensive challenges faced by the Space Shuttle's TPS. The stainless steel airframe adds structural resilience, allowing the vehicle to survive even if a few tiles are lost during flight, which would have been catastrophic on the shuttle. 
If implemented, active cooling systems could further boost heat management during extreme re-entry scenarios, a key enabler for future Mars missions. Producing tiles in-house also gives SpaceX greater control over the supply chain and makes the system more scalable. Naturally, these innovations come with challenges. Active cooling adds system complexity, increasing the difficulty of manufacturing and introducing more potential points of failure. The high tile count, around 18,000, necessitates a strong quality control and inspection regime, though this is less burdensome than the shuttle's system, thanks to the mechanical attachment method. And if ablative thermal protection is used on early Mars missions, it would reduce the reusability of the vehicle, trading longevity for survivability in extreme conditions.